Well, hi there, everyone. I think we are finally working. Unfortunately, it would appear that I now have no attendees. Never mind, let us click start, but now it's not. Hey guys, I think we are now live. I think I've got one attendee. If you are here, could you just send me something in the Q and A? You can just say hi or something like that. Just so I know I'm not doing this just to nobody. I know there's a little bit of a delay as well, so I am going to try and make my way through anyway. This should record, so hopefully, hopefully somebody's watching this later on. Cool, so I'm going to plot on. So we are looking today at the Access to AG programmes that we offer at East Durham College and where you could end up having completed one. So what we offer is a local high quality, high performing course. We've got very high pass rates and very successful transition into university. We've got small to medium class sizes compared with other providers. We've got a dedicated access team who all teach their A-level equivalent subject. So I've got that AD6 logo at the bottom. So you know you're getting the same quality of teaching as other level three students. You've got very high quality teaching as voted for by students for many years running um, and excellent support to ensure that you achieve and hopefully exceed your potentials. And say an anonymous hi, so I shall send a hi back. I'm glad it may only be me and you, but I will still talk through this regardless. I've got some time at the end for a question and answer session, so we'll do that at the end as well. So, as I say, you've got plenty of options with us. We've got not every pathway um, that's offered, because if we did, I don't think we'd have anywhere near enough stuff, but the ones that get people to where they need to be. So we offer education, which includes study skills, which is delivered to all students on the access programme. We've got statistics in there, which is common to both education and science. We tend to find that with education, students need that level of maths they like a level three maths particularly for if anyone's considering going on to uh, primary school teaching we've got english language and literature similar to statistics except this one appears in humanities obviously and once again the primary school teaching especially they like that level three english to be there and then obviously within education we offer education studies where surprisingly enough you study what education is, what education means, a little bit the sociology, I suppose, behind education. Within humanities, once again, we've already spoken about study skills and English language and literature. But we've also got early modern English history in there, which is really quite interesting. And um, you learn all about witchcraft, you learn about everything you could possibly want to know about uh, history, if I'm honest with you, at that stage. And the English Revolutions is in there too. We'll talk about that in more detail later. And sociology, and um, we'll talk about that in more detail later as well, but obviously fits in very nicely with the humanities. They work very well together as a subject, except for people considering going into things like social work. Um, and we've got nurse midwifery, obviously, it's a very big seller. You can see that career path, obviously, there. Within that, once again, we do study skills, but the three units delivered to nurse midwifery are just for nurse midwifery because they are our larger class sizes. So we need to keep them as distinct as possible. We've got human physiology in there, obviously marries with biology, but is very specific to human physiology. You've got psychology, which once again, we'll talk about more detail later, but with the psychology, um, it's more getting in, getting the grips of the brain, how we think, 
and social issues in healthcare, where we're looking at bringing that little bit of sociology in there, um, but also trying to understand the complexities of healthcare um, from every possible aspect, financial, physical, personal. And then we move on to science, and um, we've had success in the past for getting people into dentistry and, and uh, medicine via our science programmes. And once again, everyone does study skills. I've already mentioned statistics, but you do biology, but it's in a broader sense. Um, so you do a little bit of biochemistry in there. You look at anatomy and physiology, uh, genetics we also look at, and chemistry. We cover a lot of aspects of physical, organic and inorganic uh, chemistry in there to try and marry uh, the access programme with the A-level programme. Uh, two attendees now. Um, if you are our new attendee who hasn't said hi yet, please send a hi in the Q&A. Um, but this is the major part. Where can an access to HE programme take you? With us, the sky genuinely is the limit. We recently changed our uh, provider to one that we thought offered greater career prospects. Um, as you can see underneath, those are examples literally just from last year of where our students went off to. So you've got adult nursing, child uh, nursing, mental health nursing. Obviously, I thought one that was really interesting was anthropology with a language. Uh, pure biology, what's missing off the bottom there is things like zoology, we've got computer digital forensics there, we've got ODP, paramedics, we've, got, we've had pharmacists go off previously. Uh, primary education's there, socio uh, social work, pure sociology, so law we've got as well. So you've got loads of possible entries. If I know a science programme, we get a lot of people want to go into engineering as well. And um, obviously there's chemical engineering there, but we've had com compute computational engineers go off. We've had everything you can possibly think of in an engineering sense. Um, moving on. So, like I said, study skills. Everybody does study skills. The reason for that is that all learners are expected to complete a portfolio. Um, we uniquely tailor our skills, our study skills sessions, and we review this every year. At the minute, we run it very much alongside progression into HE, progression in the university, and other ways that you might be able to get prepared for it. Um, it's definitely a useful thing. It, it's previously been seen in the past as not so useful, which is why we have a previous provider, which is why we have tailored it uh, along the lines that you need to get into university. It's all about progression. That's what we're, the whole focus of the study skill sessions are about progression and moving on. So, I'm going, to go through, I'm going to talk through each pathway first. Like I say, there will be time for a Q&A at the very end. So don't worry if you've got any burning questions, we will get to them. So for education, given the career path afterwards, we recommend that you've got GCSE grade four or C in both English and maths. Um, simply for the fact that if you don't have those, you may not get into your chosen universities. You might not get onto your chosen courses. So English literature and language, I'll talk about this in education, so I won't talk about it in humanities, which I'm sure you're pleased to be aware. Don't know how my voice comes across, but I can't imagine it'd be too uh, exciting. Um, so what you study, we do an introduction first. You recap the fundamentals of English grammar and syntax, which is a brilliant word, as well as undertake a study of how to analyse sources. Source analysis is a really big thing, particularly within um, education and humanities. Um, we then move on to the, the history of English language over time. You've got to understand all the internal and external influences that have shaped the English language as we know it today. It, the English language is a developing language. It's not a dead language. As I'm sure you're all aware, having probably looked at it way back when in school, and um, we don't speak the same way that Shakespeare spoke. I think 
we're all pretty glad of that, if I'm honest. Um, but it, it's a developing language. It's, it's, I don't want to use the word that I would use normally here in person because this is being recorded. Um, but it's a language that has been spliced together from various other languages. We move on to short stories. Um, which is, this, I like, I love the way that Kirsty's wrote this. Time to enhance our literary skills. Uh, you have a good look at The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, which is a collection of gothic fairy tales, and understand and analyse her form, structure, and language and the impact that they have. Um, <laughs> the stories shouldn't be read to children at bedtime. I, I think if, if it's what I'm thinking of that you showed me before, I don't think you should. Adults should read it at bedtime either. And then understanding the novel she's got there. So we'll look at a, a Victoria, Victorian novel, in this case, uh, Silas Mana by George Eliot. And you pull all of, of that analysis skill that you've um that you've developed into this. You should hope that the skills you'll develop over this are analytical and interpretive skills. We get fluency in written language and spoken language. That's what we're really hoping for out of this. Um, you'll be assessed through three essays and an exam at the end, which will be an essay and a piece of creative writing. If you've got some possible careers you could go into via this, if you've got teaching, social work, speech therapy, law, obviously you could go down a pure English route as well. And there's plenty there for you should you choose to go down that route. So within that, once again, because this is in science, I won't discuss it twice. I'll only talk about it here. Um, numerical and statistical methods, or as I call it, statistics. Um, why would you study statistics? It ex helps you explore sample methods and research skills, opens a door with data analysis, and allows you to analyse and interpret your research findings. Okay. Within this, you are assessed by a purely, um, not not purely at the minute we currently have an exam in this because we feel as though it's necessary for you going forward with maths and um, it is something that we do review every year though because there is also one in chemistry so we don't know whether we want people to be examined twice um, and we'll develop algebraic methods for problem solving statistical methods for data analysis sampling techniques data collection logical thinking and time management within this i'm just checking to see we're now on zero attendees. I will keep plodding through because like I say, hopefully this has been recorded and you will be able to access it at a later date. Um, within this subject set, you've also got education studies. Hopefully within this, you'll be able to understand key developments in education policy, understand the practical applications of your pedagogy, which is a word you'll come across time and time again, and you'll comp complete a themed research project around education. Hopefully with this, you'll develop your ped pedagogy further, you'll understand the impact of education, you'll develop planning and preparation skills as well as our time management and teamwork. So massive in education is teamwork. Moving from that into the humanities pathway. Given the career path afterwards, we suggest that you have at least a GCC grade four or C in English. Um, obviously, it's better if you've got in GCC English and maths, but uh, we've already discussed English language and literature. So we'll look at sociology. Charlie's put this together for us. She's got some really insightful questions at the left there that you come to discuss in sociology. Um, sociology is itself the study of society, how different parts of society affect who we are, our life chances and how inequalities are created in education and crime. I'm sure we're just reading that we all know that there are inequalities throughout the world. There's still the unfortunately we live in a world where they always will be, but exploring them and trying to reason them um, may help it become a bit clearer for you. Um, we are also you're purely assessed via assignment in sociology via essay format. Um, she said beforehand, really, really 
brush up on your literacy skills. Obviously, you'll be doing that in G in level three uh, English language and literature anyway. Um, it is better if you have GCSE English moving forward. Um, she does like the theme, our lessons around discussion. If you are to go into humanities, you have to be prepared to discuss, to, to talk, to reason out. There's no such thing as a correct answer in sociology, so be prepared to debate. Um, she said there are some possible university paths for social work, community and youth studies, social psychology, sociology, criminology, public health, and career pathways. After that, you've got teaching, legal profession, social work, social research, criminal justice, non-profit organisations, marketing and human resources. Obviously, that is a very limited number of what you can actually do after this, but those are just some ideas. Um, after that, we've got early modern English history. Um, the whole point of studying history, one, one of the major points of studying history is to become confident in using historical sources. Um, you get to explore the guts and gore of the English revolutions, like it stated, and you look at witchcraft throughout the ages. Hopefully, with this, you'll develop um, a broad, broader understanding of what early modern England was. So we're looking, I'm sure Julie will correct us if I'm wrong, around about the 1500s to the end of the 1600s. Um, you understand the impact of witchcraft on northeast England. Um, for those of you that are interested, have a read up on the very witch trial. It is very interesting. And once again, we hope that you develop plan and preparation skills, time management, and teamwork. Okay, nurse midwifery, which is obviously one of our bigger ones. Um, to cope with the demands of this course, because it is a very demanding course and what you'd go on to afterwards. We suggest that you've got GCC grade four or C in English and or maths, preferably in both. It does make things that much easier. And if you're looking to progress further, you might, there's always that possibility that you'll get into university without the grade four um, or the C in those two. That doesn't necessarily mean that it'll stand you in good stead when you go to get jobs later in life or if you look for progression routes within those jobs later in life. Um, Both put this together for human physiology. Um, like it says, physiology is all about how the human body works. Um, we start with an introduction to cell biology. Um, we look at the structure and function of cells and membranes. You've been very nice there um, and said that it's assessed by your scene exam. Um, unit two moves on to that musculoskeletal system that we talked about earlier. That's a cess fire and assignment. Unit three is a biggie. So we look at all the organ systems. Um, looking at the heart, the lungs, the nerves, elementary canal, and how hormones are together. Once again, that's a cess fire and assignment. So we've just been attacked by a cat. And unit four is a practical investigation where you plan, undertake, and write up a practical activity based on an aspect of physiology. But you get the opportunity to decide that aspect yourself. Psychology, thanks to Christine for putting this together for us. Um, psychology isn't about reading minds, it's about understanding the mind and understanding behaviour. In your modules, you cover various approaches that can help to understand how we, how and why we behave. Um, start with an introduction, which looks at various approaches and key studies and debates in psychology, which is assessed by an assignment. We've got psychological perspectives and behavior, how do psychologists explain behavior, and this is done as an exam. We've got defining, classifying, and explaining disorders. So how psychologists explain and treat uh, mental health issues, including schizophrenia. Um, for memory, how do we explain memory and forgetting? It's something I could definitely do with sitting in on, if I'm honest with you. And aggression, how do we go about explaining aggression? Um, psychology is fascinating, it's also a challenging subject. You've got to be able to apply your knowledge to real life events and everyday behaviours. May it make you see the world in a whole new light. We hope that it does anyway. Um, and the last unit within uh, nurse midwifery is social issues and healthcare. 
helps you to understand the broader aspects of social care in the UK, develop your understanding of safeguarding and its importance, and explore the challenges of mental health and disabilities. Hopefully with this, you'll develop um, understanding in the issues that face us working in health and social care. We're going to explore the impact of good social care systems on its users. Remember, there's such a wide user base in the UK alone that access the health and social care system. And once again, we do hope that you develop planning and preparation skills, time management and teamwork. Last but not least, we have the science pathway. Um, given the career path afterwards, you really need that GCSE uh, grade four or C in maths. Um, biology, we start with, so we get to explore the musculoskeletal system, like I've said, we understand key biological principles and macromolecules, that's where respiration comes in, and it's not just breathing in and out. Um, that's where your genetics comes in, so we have a look a little bit at Mendelian genetics. And you get to complete a research project in a key biological area. Once again, you get a little bit of autonomy over that, but we will push it in the right direction. Um, hopefully within this you'll develop you understand the play biological principles built upon beyond access it's not just in the access program that we look at that and um, you can develop some research skills some data collection and analysis and time management skills we have one attendee again Hello, if you can hear me. Hello. So, like I say, we've talked through biology, we're looking at chemistry now. Hopefully, we'll get to the end, understand core principles of chemistry, get a further explore organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is very interesting. And put your math skills to the test with physical chemistry. That's where maths, um, physics, and chemistry can come together. Um, hopefully, Hopefully you'll develop math skills within the context of chemistry, understand organic chemistry and its importance within medicine and the medicine and the science sector as a whole. Um, links between the three sciences, you'll develop some logical thinking and obviously time management whenever you complete an assignment. Chemistry is one of those that is assessed by your exam, um, as is statistical and mathematical methods. Okay, I'm now going to go beyond the pathway, pathways that we have and just have a look at a couple of previous students and their testimonials. So this was Chris, Chris Elliott. He studied the Access Science Pathway. He's currently studying environmental science at the University of East Anglia. He said it's one of the best decisions he ever made. He loves his course. Um, I'll be perfectly honest with you when it comes to Chris. Um, he was one of the very few people who's provided me with a personal statement, um, which is what you write before you go off to university, that was so powerful and hard hitting. I, we didn't need to change a thing. He really knew what he wanted to do. Um, he was worried about going back to university, um, but his course built on A level concepts, which, had he not had the access course, he would have long since forgotten. We talk about referencing throughout, referencing is massive um, when it comes to any course that you do, really. Um, one of his assignments consisted of referencing tasks, so he knew exactly what to do. It was a straightforward task for him. Um, another skill that he developed was time management. Time management is massive because you'd think being a full time student, you get a lot of free time, but you get very little at university. Um, trying to balance assignments, reading, and social opportunities because you need to have a social life at university is key to success and um, completing the access course gave him confidence to tackle university head on and allowed him to adjust to a learning environment <laughs> he said i was obviously one of his lecturers he said for those who are on the science pathway even the electromagnetic radiation song was very useful and um, if you've ever heard it before if you've got kids that never heard it or whether you've used it yourself in school, you will know exactly what I'm on about because you don't forget that in a hurry. 
And thankfully, Chris did say that he recommended the access course as a means to re-enter education. Re-entering education isn't an easy choice to make. I totally get and understand and appreciate that. But it is one that can be worthwhile. Um, this was a student who did ask to remain anonymous because she was she'd gone off to be a midwife. Um, her course, for those who are interested, includes anatomy and physiology, life science, social science. You can see on our nurse midwifery pathway how much of that is already covered. Um, plenty of academic assessment as well as practice placements in the community and hospital settings. We also need to provide practical and evidence based assessments, which is why we like our access programs where they can be, be very hands on. That's why we like having the um, research task in there. Um, the access helped this student um, because they hadn't been in, stood in an educational setting for more than 20 years found it quite daunting but they felt really prepared for the degree course because we did develop skills here it's not just a case of learning and regurgitating it's about skill development and application and they said that the contact access tutors enough and we are we do like to challenge on our course we don't just accept Pass, 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 pass. We like people to get the highest grades they possibly can, and we only get that from us being willing to push ourselves. Um, and rolling on the course has been life changing for this person. As a, she's now a student midwife, she's becoming very close to being a full blown midwife and not just a student. So, this is just a few places um, that our students went off to within the last few years. Obviously, it's not all of them because we've got people into many different universities. Um, a couple of them in Glasgow. We've got really good links with Dundee. Um, so we've had people go off to the London universities, had someone go off to Portsmouth. Uh, one person went off to Bristol. So we this course can let you get anywhere that you want, really, as long as you will learn to put the effort in. Some of the things that we offer uh, within the college as a whole, because becoming an access student means you get access to the full uh, college facilities. You get complimentary free access to the gym while you're studying at EDC. Our state of the art gym is on the Pick Lee campus. We've got a huge sports hall. I believe there's four full size football pitches as well as an outdoor 3G five side pitch as well. There's a couple of five side pitches. You get free bus travel with us for with a rerun. Now I know with access students it can be a case of sometimes we think, oh well, I drive. Don't underestimate how important that, that bus travel can be. Um, if you show your college badge, you can get to and from college on any Arriva bus. You can use any Arriva bus. If you've got to use multiple buses, then so be it. You'd still get there. We've got a Starbucks on site. Um, we serve up from the hatch. Whether you're thinking pumpkin spice, although we're a little bit away from that now, so it's May, bring on November. Uh, whether you want a pumpkin spice latte or you just want to kick back with an espresso, we've got them all right there, freshly made in front of you. So you're probably thinking, what do I do next? You can very quickly and easily apply um, via the eastern.ac.uk website if you haven't already applied. Uh, look out for our access to HE Summer School coming soon. We are working massively behind the scenes on that. Hope, let's hope that we can be back in doing that physically. If we can't and it's a case we're going to do it digitally, then so be it. We will still run it. Do not worry about that. Our open evenings, hopefully, we start, hope to be starting these in person again very soon. Um, we will keep doing these digitally though, if needs be. They say this one will be recorded, so you will be able to check on it as and when. 
check us out on Facebook and Instagram. I do apologise if my mug that comes up. I know that it says ED6 sixth form. We are obviously the sixth form part, but we are also the access lecturers. We are also the access team. So we do put things on there. It just saves us having to have multiple accounts, which as you can imagine, will be difficult to keep track of. Once again, I'm being attacked by a cat. Um, what you should do now is look to get ahead in your studies. OK, use BBC bite size. Make sure your le level two knowledge is up to date and make sure it's your relevant level two knowledge. There's no point if you go to nest midwifery, there's not a lot of point in brushing up on your geography skills. What you need to be looking at is your maths, your English. Everybody needs to be looking at the maths and English just to make sure that they are up to date and then have a look at your biology. So if there's some GCSE psychology on there, maybe maybe get, just get all your skills brushed up. And that leads us into our Q&A session. So I think we still have one attendee. We do. I don't know if you can hear me. If you've got any questions at all, please ask them in the Q&A section. If you don't have any, please still just type and say, I don't have any. I will hang around until um, until you need me. And we've gone on to zero attendees, so I'm guessing that that person had nothing to ask. Uh, if you are watching this separately, this is where it will end. Thank you very much for listening. If you've got any questions at all, you can find all of our details on the website. Please get in contact. There's no such thing as a daft question. The only daft question is the one that you don't ask. And I'm sure between ourselves and student services, we will be able to help. Thank you very much for listening and I will hopefully speak to people in person soon. Bye.